so we will talk about it hopefully a little bit, but I am in a state of recovering. Yeah. <laughs> now, how did the, the Samaritans idea and the fundraising all come about in the first place? I must say that uh, someone that is working with me, it was so clever to, to suggest it for me because my single call, I'm calling you, it was written in a time that I was in completely despair, coming to London, no family, no friends, but not knowing that I can call a number in a very dark moments. I didn't know that I can call a number for free without being shy that people we know, oh, I, who I am, what I am, all those stuff. And um, so that's how it happens. He told me, why don't we do something nice for the Samaritans? And I, of course, volunteer, uh, didn't know that four hours would be a challenging. <laughs> if it was, you know what, if it was like yourself, in, in, at home, it would have been much easier. I could have a cup of tea or coffee and just <laughs> relax. But being in a church, I didn't have audience. I thought I would have audience, but it was a very cold Friday evening, six o'clock. Uh, but you know what? It works perfect. Always things works per perfect. Uh, I almost reached the goal, which is only 500 pounds. But just to think that three pounds can save a person life um that's yeah. all what i ask people to donate um yeah, that is amazing you know they, that, that money is going to go to such good use and the samaritans they're just amazing what they do and the fact that they're there and i suppose it's just telling everyone that that service is available for people if they need it yeah and and we don't know it i mean you've been through also hard time yeah. i definitely I don't have family in the UK, so it's different. So it's, it was very, very difficult. But um, I wish I would know if I'm honest, I wish I would know. Yeah. Um, because talking about uh, the pain, the grief, the memories just helps, helps it. But many people has different problem. Not everyone just uh, mm. experience grief. People, life is a challenging, uh, yes. a challenging journey. And uh, it's really, really, really good to know that there and are I, people. And I think talking about things, it does help through those dark moments, because obviously, you know, the loss of lava last year, I've had counselling and that has helped me because it's it's helped me kind of look at it from a uh, from, from a wider angle, if you like, sort of seeing the full full picture more just by having conversations and getting things off my chest so you know that's that's helped me a lot i think i think it's very very uh it's a uh, cathartic therapeutic uh yeah, yeah and, and it was um the four hour streaming was kind of like combination of uh i'm calling you now which that's in the words of the chorus um also for myself four years anniversary uh, for the death of my uh, husband, um, which was a therapist. And people used to call him at night, at night. Uh, people that wanted to, you know, end life. And uh, I've been there for 10 years and uh, I thought it would be the, the most perfect uh, celebration because I have to tell you, just to give you hope, after four years, there is healing. There is healing of the grief to everyone that listened to you and lost uh, their loved one in this uh, pandemic or in any way, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And there is. Uh, and you don't forget or sort of, you know, uh, uh, get over it. You just kind of find ways, I suppose, to make the sort of the green process easier as you move forward and sort of get exactly. on, move on you, with your life. Yeah. Yes. And you don't. That's why I think it was brilliant of you to do the gig on Friday and do the four hours live streaming in the cold church to kind of pay forward and help other people that are in a different place to where you are now. Exactly. And just to think about when I wrote the song, I came with one suitcase, really was yeah. in dark places, which you will hear in my next releases because finally I'm opening myself. People always see the smile. 
the smile that I have, which is kind of my branding, uh, always smiling, it is my choice to smile always, just to do something positive when something difficult happened. But there is a lot of pain and you can overcome it. And there is support from community, from friends, but also from people, strangers like the Samaritans. Do you find that the music, you know, and the uh, writing poetry, writing songs, do you find that almost like a form of therapy for you? Absolutely, because I didn't speak with every anyone in those uh, dark moments that, uh, when I came here. Um, so, uh, and, and when we talk about, you probably know it, you can be down, you can feel, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> the, the grief, the, the pain, but you can be really down. You can be suddenly on a Saturday night alone or more yeah. or Sunday morning and really feel extremely bad. Sometimes alcohol make it even a, a little bit bigger and amplifies that. So when I write the songs, it's those moments and uh, you can hear it in the in the song. I'm calling okay. you now. I'm alone. I'm calling you now. Make me strong because I'm quite a strong person and I've been all my life. But even strong people have a breaking mm. point. So I, yeah. I've often wondered, and a good friend of mine asked me recently, when you're a songwriter or anything like that, when when is the distinction between <laughs> you writing something for pleasure or for yourself and you're writing something for work? How does that work out? Because I imagine you don't stop writing. You just have to decide what's yours and what's for work. So I think there is different types of uh, songwriters. There are very talented songwriters that just have the ability to write from here, right? I'm talking about the, the best ones, uh, to write from here, but really make it uh, for the others. I am not one of those. I just write from a very pure place, not thinking, oh, that will touch or that will work. And that's why, you know, I'm not a superstar uh, yet, but uh, it's uh, some people. And, and if you look, for example, at Adele songs, that they're fantastic and how much they touch people. Uh, no one likes you. If you look, it's a group of people wrote it together top writers together writing it the top songs that you hear in the chart mostly are top writers that coming together so you can imagine that it's a different thing when it group writing or someone that is dis uh, uh, in despair mm. uh, on friday night alone it, it, it's mm. different do you understand so so yeah. um so I think, uh, like, for example, a song that I sang uh, twice, and I think, on Friday, and uh, I love it. I'm sure you do as well. Vincent by Don McLean. Yeah, it's a great song. It's a very <gasps> good song. Yeah. What a song. This is guaranteed that it's not a group of people wrote it. Nice. It's just a geniosity of yeah. putting... And this is something I'm more connected to, and it was so appropriate to sing it on that night because Van Gogh was in that despair, has had the art, but even though he had the art, mm. it it was with all his passion and loneliness and yearning, and uh, he had to finish his life. And so it's all about how my, how we handle the emotions and uh, yes. And Those four emotions and translating that into into a poem and into a song. And I know that you, it's kind of how you work, I suppose, isn't it? You, you get the poetry and then that sort of then inspires a song, I suppose. In some ways, for yeah. me, a, some poetry that, you know, we spoke about it in other interviews. I uh, take poetry of others and uh, even of children that I created a uh, competition for them that children can express themselves. Um, but with me, when I write my own songs, it, many times it, the, the melody and the words comes together almost in one take. This yeah. is my best song. So uh, that's how I write. But 
Sometimes it's just music inspires me to write. Sometimes it's just the words. Ah, but as long as that we are creative, that's the most important thing. Absolutely. So the new single, I'm calling you now. Uh, this is uh, ha- ha- when when's that released? Wow, a seventh of January, the beginning oh, of now, the now. year. Now, it's, now. Wow, Thank yeah, you, wow. you know, I you've had a busy can... start. Busy start for 2022 for you, then. Yes, I, I just cannot believe that I'm just the beginning of the year. It's going to be the biggest year for me. So I'm sure I will see you more, but. Um, I thought it will be the right way to start the year. Yeah. Also for people, after all this high of the holidays, um, the festive seasons, um, many people that don't have the family and don't have the support, they, they and, and the new year resolution is to find a new, a new love, you know, or, or to be strong, to keep going in 2022. Yeah. So I thought to release it at the beginning of the year before we are going to release more uh, uh, up lifting songs <laughs> that sounds like a great idea because you know january it can be hard for a lot of people and it is mm-hmm. probably one of the most depressing months isn't it just by the nature of coming out of christmas and like, it always like, feels like one of the longest although it's yeah. very similar to all the others oh. well because it's cold and everything else uh but yeah it's you know, brightening our day here in here in your music tally so we're going to play your song now i'm calling you it's been really good to talk to you and really good to check in with you uh you're looking very well by the way we can see you on the computer screen you can't see me but i can see you looking but you know i have an eye infection that's why i'm with the look of the glasses but oh, okay you. <laughs> I don't know. you're pulling it off well tally it it off well. would you like to introduce your song then Yes. So uh, can I just say to people uh, that uh, listening to me, uh, if they can go to my fundraising page, uh, Talik Ren, I'm calling you now as my single title. I'm calling you. Thank you, Tally. Always a pleasure to talk to you.